All right guys, today we're talking drones. Should you get one? And if you are gonna get one, what one should you get? I'm gonna run through three things that's gonna help you decide. I've eaten all my munchies and I just got caramel on my thumb. Mmm, I'm nice actually intolerant, I really shouldn't be having them, but on point. It's bank holiday Monday, hope you're having a nice time. A little update, I went to this amazing cinema yesterday. It's like sofas, but they bring you tea. Awesome. Right, now today, we're talking drones. I want to help you decide, should you get a drone? Obviously drones have been around a while, you know what they do, everyone knows what they're about, but it's still a difficult one to decide, should you get one? So the first thing that you need to do is ask yourself, what sort of filmmaker do you want to be? I know a very talented photographer called Matt Storer. What he does is he travels around shooting stills and video, doing vlogs about photography. He also uses the Mavic Pro. He loves it, and rightly so, because he is a travel filmmaker. Five travel hacks to save you money and time in three minutes. Let's go. Where are you going? Can I come to tell me you don't walk away? Don't walk away. The first thing you need to do is ask yourself what sort of filmmaker do you want to be? I want to be a writer director. Why did I buy a drone? Okay, <laughs> to be a writer director, you need to be investing your time and your money in narrative in production, things that are going to help you in a more practical day-by-day -day basis. Nice lighting, nice lenses, good sound, good cameras. But maybe you want to be a travel filmmaker. You absolutely need a drone. You 100% need to buy one because aerial work in travel filmmaking is essential. Without it, you don't get that sense of scale. You look at any other travel filmmaker, they will always have a drone. Where it gets tricky though is if you are a sole trader in terms of you are a one-man band freelancer and you think Aerial will be great because there's another tool, another string to my bow, you need to decide from the get-go, does drone work interest you enough that you want to dedicate a lot of time in that avenue? For me, I thought it'd be a great little one-day job here or there, but it's not. To do a proper commercial job with it, you need to be putting in time for the pre-checks. There's a lot that goes into the laws and the safety and regulation of this. Decide from the start, do you want to be a writer-director? Do you want to be a travel filmmaker? Do you want to be a general corporate filmmaker? Or do you want to specialise in aerial work? And if you are going to, you need to properly, properly invest the time, the effort, the energy into this. So let's say that you're thinking, yeah, I still want to buy a drone. Great. There's some amazing products out there. I mean, obviously we've had some come and go, like the GoPro Karma, for instance. But right now we have the Spark, we have the Air, the Mavic, the Phantom 4, the Inspire 2. The Inspire 2 is wicked because you've also got the separate camera lenses that come with it. But I'm about to tell you how much I have spent on drones for the last year, and I might cry a little bit, so bear with me. To set myself up as a commercially licensed aerial filmmaker has cost me 3,515 pounds and 60 pence. It's a lot of money. How is that broken down? £1,140 went on the Mavic. Beautiful drone, it fitted all my requirements. We're gonna talk about what drone you should buy in a bit, but that was the drone for me. So I spent just over a grand on the drone. Now, the license, the actual qualification, cost £1,698. That includes a two-day course, that includes an online resource area. It involves a manual template for which you have to write your own manual. The manual is about 15,000 words. That is basically a dissertation. The template's brilliant. It is actually quite accessible, but it's still a lot of work. And even though the course is two days, if you're not careful, this can stretch out for months. So you need to really be on it to get this one going. And then there's also an exam at the end of it. Without this, you won't get your PFCO. And without that, you will not be allowed to work commercially. Any job that you're being employed for, that you are being paid to do for aerial work, that is commercial. Now, if you're going to be just doing some narrative work or your own little projects here or there, you don't actually need a license, you just need the drone. But that could change very soon. I know there's been a lot of talk about it and I'm surprised it hasn't changed yet. But in terms of commercial work, corporate work, anything like that, you're going to need this, otherwise you're breaking the law. 
So you've got your drone, you've got your license, great. You're also gonna need your insurance and that is a whopping 677 pounds, 60 pence, 52 pounds a month. And here's the thing, without the insurance, you cannot get the license. So you need all these three things. That sets you up as a basic aerial photographer, cinematographer. But actually, I've spent more than that because I spent 75 pounds on variable NDs, tiny little NDs that go onto the lens so I can still shoot at 50th shutter speed. Otherwise, you're gonna be getting that horrible look of having like one over 200. No one wants that. And having some little NDs that go on is it's actually vital if you want to be considering this properly. Photography, not so much, but cinematography, it's a must. Then you're going to be looking at things like high vises, cones, landing mats, other little bits and pieces to keep you up to date. And the thing with the Maverick is that you also need a phone. So I'm sure everyone's got a phone, but I actually keep a separate phone dedicated for this. Because to be doing it legally, you need to have a phone to call up like an ambulance or a hospital if you need to, and you need the phone that actually works it. You can use a tablet, so if you've got a tablet, great, but that could be another hundred pounds that you're spending there. So that links into question one. What type of filmmaker do you want to be and do you want to spend this money on that? Travel filmmakers? This is a grey area because every different country has different laws, so actually you might not need a licence. But if you want to be doing corporate work in this country, it's a must, so bear that in mind. You could be looking at spending about three and a half grand here just to get set up. But you've decided that you want a drone, you're going to get all the right legal requirements. What drone do you get? Now, choosing your drone is hard. Okay, I spent a long time deciding do I want the Mavic Pro or do I want the Phantom 4 Pro? The thing is, I like a good image. You know, you want good image quality. And at the time that I was buying it, the Spark and Air weren't even out, so I couldn't consider that. But had they been, I still wouldn't have gone for them because I wanted something that delivered high quality image. Not that they don't, but something that also looks professional on set because do you know what it is a bit of it that the client you want to impress them because that's how they keep bringing you on board and it's not important but it just avoids the awkward questions but size for me was key the phantom 4 pro needs its own bag it is massive and it might not be that heavy but i've already got a massive camera bag the last thing i want to be doing is bringing another one on just for the drone so why did i choose the maverick and why do i reckon that it's a great one for you the size is perfect, it is perfect, and it's that sweet spot of good image quality for the size. My Mavic Pro, I can take it abroad and it just all goes in one bag. I really enjoy the functionality of the Mavic, I enjoy the controls, I enjoy the way it flies, it's very stable in the wind, it's surprisingly stable to be honest. I've flown it pretty much at the limit of what it should be flown at, and the footage is so smooth that you wouldn't even know. Now, it says it's 4K, it might technically be 4K, it's not really 4K. If you crop into that to a HD size, it looks terrible. That's just the truth of it. But put the 4K image in a 1080p timeline, it does look nice. And if you're gonna shoot in D-Log, actually increase the sharpness just a little bit because it's a little bit soft. You wanna underexpose a little bit because the highlights blow out terribly, but the shadows actually keep their look quite well. The powering solution on these are brilliant, right? So you can put all four batteries on one, charger like this. So they all clip on there, they all go round, you've got one, two, three, four, and then the cable also has a USB, so you can charge two USBs, so you can charge your phone and the controller at the same time. But that's not where it comes in amazingly. The thing that you will really love, that I really, really enjoy, this is an added option, all right, but this little thing here turns this into a portable battery charger for whatever you want using two USBs. I now have a phone charger. That That's awesome. That is, that's great. That is one of the best tools that I've ever heard of and I never hear anyone talking about it, but what a brilliant idea. So there you have it. Should you buy one? Decide what type of filmmaker you want to be. And if you want to decide which one, weigh up size versus image quality. The smaller the drone, the lower the image quality. It's as simple as that, but it's also gonna be cheaper. The best camera for image quality that you can buy is a fully fledged drone under 20 kilograms, which means that you can fly it on one of the most accessible licenses, is the Inspire 2 using the X5S camera. That is actually cinematically stunning. And then you're just gonna work backwards like that. For me, the Mavic Pro is that perfect sweet spot. And actually, it's incredibly reliable. It's got wicked features. For instance, it's got active track, it's got tripod mode, it's got cinematic mode, which just means that it softens all the controls and 
allows you to do those slow pans and tilts as you sweep around. It's also got obstacle avoidance in the front. I think it's a very reliable drone. I had the Phantom 2 before that, did not enjoy that. This is a great little drone. So if you are gonna buy a drone, I highly recommend you look at this. If you're a travel filmmaker, look at the spark in the air. If you're a corporate commercial drone operator, at least aspiring to be, consider the Phantom 4 Pro. If you're like me, where you are actually mainly a camera guy, but you also want a drone, the Mavic is for you. Decide if it's worth it, they're the ones to get. I'll see you on Thursday, have a lovely bank holiday, happy Easter, signing off.